Okay, here's our interview with Rebecca Koffler. Let's start with Putin and what his motivation is. I know you're a, a genuine expert on that. In fact, I, I think I also saw your YouTube video that you put out on like February 23rd, where you pretty much laid out what was going to happen. And it all it all mm -hmm. happened pretty much as you laid out. But I, I kind of tick through what you hear out there as far as potential Putin motives. And I'm, I'm just want to mm -hmm. identify a few of them and then ha have you comment on Got it. which it is. So, so one popular one is that he's facing a lot of internal um, pressure and opposition. And this war is a way of him allowing himself to stay in power. Number one, number two, you hear a lot about him having some grand vision for Russia and returning it to the world prominence a la the Soviet Union or the Russian Empire. So that would be a number two motivation, to, and which I consider to be totally separate from number one, even though both could be driving him. Number three, you've got the one that he puts out there that this is he needs to protect Russia from uh, from threats from the West, especially from NATO. Number four would simply be total self-interest of making more money for himself. And then number five would be trying to improve Russia's economy, that, that somehow Ukraine adds something valuable to Russia, and this is about improving its economy. So those are the five I came up with. You could take any one of those, or I'm just curious where, where you come down on that. Sure. You want me to start off? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to say uh, number one uh, is definitely a no. Uh, and everything else is a yes and a combination uh, of them. Why is it a no? Uh, Putin was uh, elected four times uh, as Russian president. And uh, interestingly, since the beginning of Russia's invasion on Ukraine, Putin's popularity has skyrocketed to uh, 83%. And by so the way, is that a, I'm hearing that number. Is that a poll we can trust? Uh, excellent question, uh, Jim. Yes. So of all the polls that are out there, uh, this is the one we can trust with a caveat. This is like the best that we have uh, that we have is a proxy for Russian opinion. Yes, I would. Um, so the caveat is this, obviously uh, the Russians are very concerned and paranoid for the lack of the better word due to the history of repressions and you know all kinds of things we, we just, and I was born and raised in Russia, uh, so you might know. And uh, there's even such a phrase um, that we had growing up and I'm sure they still have it there. It is not a phone conversations, which means that if the topic is a little bit too sensitive, uh, that could be perceived by authorities as critical of the government, then you can't talk about it on the phone. So even with that caveat, let's say it's not 83%. Let's say it's 60%. It's still the kind of approval rating that any U.S. leader could only dream of. Um, and and would you, sorry, would you anticipate sure. that, this, that you'd get approximately the same number regarding this conflict? In other words, those that support believe that this conflict is in Russia's interest for, versus not? Okay, another excellent question. So the Russians do not support uh, war in general, but they support Putin. So the difference between US culture, American culture and Russian culture is that they traditionally favor a very strong leader uh, who can protect them from external threats because Russia's history uh, is just war torn. You know, every single time that they had a weak leader, it was associated with what the Russians call the uh, um, instability and the time of troubles, right? Um, and so they prefer to elect somebody who borders on brutality uh, rather than a weak person. So interestingly, Joseph Stalin's popularity, who, by the way, murdered uh, millions of the Russian people, is also on the increase. So the long answer to your short question is that uh, it's complicated. Um, 
And plus, if you add like the Russian propaganda and the Soviets and the Russians are just simply the best at it. And uh, by the way, the Americans are getting pretty close as well. Um, having learned from the Soviet KGB. So um, it is, yes, they don't support the war, they support Putin, but also a significant chunk of the population supports the war because the denazification and demilitarization, the narrative that Putin has constructed, resonates with the Russian people who lost 20 million uh, of their own people to Nazi Germany. So again, it's pretty, it's pretty complicated. Uh, one data point that um, I usually remind to people who lean towards regime change is that every single time Putin was elected, the runner up was a communist, somebody who would have been even worse than Putin. Believe it or not, it's the culture that produced Ivan the Terrible who killed his own son and Joseph Stalin. Mm -hmm. And uh, so these people in Russia, they who support the war, they really have bought into this denazification um, narrative, which just seems so absurd to us here. Um, wh what do these people think? They think that Zelensky is a Nazi or they think that Ukraine is run by Nazis or or that's the majority of the population. What, what, what do they think? So the majority of the population did not buy in into denazification. So let's separate Putin's support and support of the war, which is two different things. But still, about 72 percent do support the current special operation uh, on Ukraine. So regarding the denazification, about 2% only of the Ukrainian population uh, in the election in 2019 voted, was pro-Nazi, right? There was a pro-Nazi movement, 2%. Minuscule, uh, Zelensky can't possibly be a fascist or Nazi, he's Jewish. Uh, four members of his own family, uh, his great grandfather and three of uh, the great grandfather's brothers uh, were murdered in the Holocaust. So it's clearly a lie, right? But it resonates with the Russians who now don't have much of the alternative information flows because Putin is, as the Soviets uh, were, is very, very strict in terms of uh, controlling what are the Russian uh, people allowed to know. Ironically, we are in the same boat as a intelligence officer, a former intelligence officer who does red force analysis for a living, I was stunned to learn that we also banned uh, information flows from Russia. I can't get my traditional sources, you know, Russian TV, Channel 24, Channel 1, and everything. And I am highly trained in discerning propaganda. I'm in no danger of falling, you know, um, a victim to somehow Putin's, but we do exactly the same thing. And so both sides lie right now. Putin lies about the justification of denazification, demilitarization, the Western narrative is also pretty much a lie that Putin is waging this uh, war because he's afraid of democracy. Ukraine is no, in no danger of becoming democracy anytime soon, uh, just like Russia isn't. It's at the very bottom of the corruption scale. Zelensky himself, his presidential campaign was bankrolled by Igor Kolomoisky. Yeah, who, let's hold let's hold on that for a yeah, second. Yeah, let's Let hold. Let me think okay. of Zelensky. Oh, yes, so, let's do this. So um, to wrap up on, though, on the Nazi thing, so we, since we did touch on that. Sure. So yes. you're, you're saying it's an invented thing, very common thing for Putin to kind of put out some some red herring out there. Um, yes. To misdirection. But but there's people in the West in, in, that are kind of buying into this to some extent that that there is a genuine nazi problem in ukraine so before we move past the the, the nazi narrative mm -hmm. is there an element there that's significant enough that we should be concerned about it or 
So um, I don't think I'm in a position to characterize it as significant. I'll just tell you the facts. Uh, so the Azov Battalion is a right wing, you know, Nazi fascist type of um, leaning um, a group, if you will, and uh, our own Brad Baer of Fox News, when he was interviewing President Zelensky, um, got an admission, if you will, from uh, the Ukrainian president that the Azov Battalion was incorporated into the Ukrainian army. So uh, you can't really change the, 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 the nature of what people, just like the uh, uh, Wagner group or Wagner or Wagner group or whatever, th this is the Putin's uh, um, hit squad, right? The assassins. Their Zob battalion is very similar. Is it like a huge portion of Ukrainian population and Ukrainian military? No. Is Putin amplifying? to resonate, you know, the, the, the master of the disinformation uh, that he is, the former KGB operative, yes. Thank you again to our guest, Rebecca Koffler. You can check out her book, Putin's Playbook, Russia's Secret Plan to Defeat America, wherever you get your books. Also check out Zelensky, the unlikely Ukrainian hero who defied Putin and united the world. It's a new book, which Rebecca writes the foreword to. So we highly recommend you check it out. Just came out recently on Zelensky, the unlikely Ukrainian hero who defied Putin and united the world. Thank you to our producer, Michael Parker. Thank you all for listening. We'll be back soon with another episode of The Hidden Truth Show. Thank you for listening to The Hidden Truth Show with Jim Breslow. You can find us at hiddentruthshow.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Hidden Truth Show. Join us again next week for another episode of Hidden Truth Show with Jim Russell.